Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode as I gather a few stories that I've looked at over the past week or so and bring them to you to help educate minds one tailpipe at a time. Thanks very much for joining me. Let me get right into the, some of the stories that I have today. First story talks about Hyundai and their popular Kona electric vehicle model. It's getting a makeover for the 2022 model year, and it's going to come with a new exterior design and an updated interior. Now for the exterior, the Kona electric has a new sleeker front fascia design, which has been replaced by a smooth front bumper. It also gets new headlights and daytime running lights and a new, more efficient alloy wheel design. The rear bumper and tail lights also feature a new look. For the interior, it is now equipped with a 10 and a quarter inch digital cluster and the same size center stack display, replacing the previous seven inch center screen. New connectivity features have been added, including dynamic voice recognition that can allow drivers to activate and control features like climate, audio, and steering wheel heating. Hyundai has also added a digital key feature via the dedicated smartphone Blue Link app. Now, nothing has changed on the powertrain or the battery pack, with the Kona EV being powered by a 64 kilowatt hour battery and a 150 kilowatt or 201 horsepower single electric motor, all providing an EPA ready range of 258 miles or 415 kilometers. It also supports an onboard charger for level two of up to 7.2 kilowatts and DC fast charging of up to 100 kilowatt CCS combo. No pricing has yet been announced by Hyundai, but it is expected to remain relatively unchanged. We should start to see the refreshed models show up on dealer lots later this year, and it's my hope that Hyundai will increase production from South Korea, as I believe this will be a very strong year for EV demand. Now, with my recent highlights of some Southeast Asian auto manufacturers bringing all electrics to their marketplaces, I had quite a strong positive response to these stories. In fact, I had some viewers let me know about what's going on in Thailand, so I thought I'd mention that today. Specifically, one car company, Mine Mobility, based in Bangkok, which is owned by the parent company, Energy Absolute. They came out with the SPA-1, or SPA-1, all-electric passenger vehicle. It initially received more than 4,500 orders when released, probably because of the good price point. At 1.2 million baht, or about 40,000 US, it's cheaper than a comparable Nissan Leaf or Kia Soul EV, and around the same price as petrol-powered mid-size Hondas and Toyotas. What makes the SPA-1 appealing also is that it is the first EV designed and built in Thailand. The five-seat hatchback has an NEDC range of up to 200 kilometers, now which seems to be an idea use case in this country and for a group of five Thai taxi unions that actually ordered 3,500 cars for the metropolitan Bangkok area. Other specs for the SPA-1 include a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, a 95 kilowatt, 127 horsepower electric motor, and a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour. Energy Absolute wants to dominate the EV sales in Thailand, and to support its goal, they are installing more than 700 charging stations across the country, as well as constructing a $3 billion US factory to make lithium ion batteries. Thailand is primed to pursue higher technologies that drive economic growth, and EVs open up new opportunities for success. Energy Absolute is planning on two more EVs, a cheaper compact and a pricier sports car within the next few years. Folks, I love to find out about these things going on in other parts of the world as the move towards more consumer electrification has to be a global movement, not just one region or country. And my thanks to the viewers who told me about this company and I hope that they are achieving success. Switching gears to Volkswagen, they've officially announced that the third ID model, the ID5, has entered its pilot production in Zwickau, Germany. The not yet revealed coupe SUV, a coupe version of the ID4 is what is guessed, will join the ID3 and ID4 on the market in the second half of this year. Now, unfortunately, it seems that the ID5 is not envisioned for the US or Canada marketplaces, only Europe. Now, at this point, the specs and pricing of the ID5 remain unknown. 
One can only assume that the price will be slightly higher than in the case of the ID4 for a similar battery capacity and drive unit setups. Now in total, six MEB based models will be produced in Swickow with three slots already being occupied. The ID4 entered series production on August 20th, 2020, while the ID3 entered production on November 4th, 2019. The ID3 model is also additionally produced at the Glasern Manufacture or Transparent Factory in Dresden, which serial production started on January 29th of this year. This replaced the Volkswagen e-Golf production line. Now I'm very much looking forward to seeing more info on the upcoming ID5 when it's released, so stay tuned. Now my last story today is sticking with VW, and over the last few episodes I've discussed some of the major auto manufacturers' strategic plans concerning auto electrification, and what they want to do with regards to what in reality is the future of consumer transportation. And I would be remiss if I did not bring up the Volkswagen Group. Volkswagen Group has been talking about EVs for several years. In fact, up until 2019, they were selling two fully electric vehicles, the e-Golf and the e-Up, to various markets around the globe. If you did not know, the Volkswagen Group or VW Group is a massive company that comprises 12 brands from seven European countries. These brands are Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, Skoda, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ducati, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, Scania, and MAN. Now to give you a sense of scale, all these brands represent a workforce of over 671,000 globally, supported by 136 manufacturing facilities. Today, the VW Group produces about 26,000 vehicles and related major components per day which are for sale in over 150 countries. Now, trying to put the past behind them, especially with Dieselgate, VW Group has accelerated their plans for electrification and launched their first vehicle under the new VW ID branding, the ID3, in 2019. And the ID4 deliveries will start this year in North America. Now, based on VW Group's MEB platform and knowing that this massive company has all the necessary tools and finances to make a big splash in the EV segment, more electrics have also come out from their other brands. VW Group's new slogan, which states, EVs for the millions, not the millionaires, may sound corny, but it is based on goals set by them. They plan on offering 70 all-electric models by 2025 and achieving total sales of 28 million EVs by 2030. Interestingly, 20 of these are already in production, nearly 10 years ahead of this goal. Now, they also expect price parity between gas and electric cars during the second wave of their MEV-based models later this decade. And in fact, they want to fully electrify their fleet by 2040 and be completely emissions-free by 2050. Now remember, all these plans need money to be realized. The VW Group understands this, and they seem that they are on track to make all this happen. The group is investing $86 billion US in e-mobility, hybrid technology, and digitalization over the next five years alone, and 41 billion US of that will be invested in battery electric vehicles. Let me read you a recent quote from CEO of Volkswagen Group, Herbert Diess. Quote, Having set the course for a battery electric future in the Volkswagen Group early on, we are now on a global leader with our electric platforms and a broad range of electric vehicles. In the coming years, it will be crucial to also reach a leading position in car software in order to meet people's needs for individual, sustainable, and fully connected mobility in the future. Now, folks, as I have said before, and I will continue to say, I am super stoked on what VW Group has achieved so far and what their goals and aspirations are for electrification in the future. Whether you still hold a grudge on them for Dieselgate or you have an open mind to really see what they have done in such a short time to turn things around, there is no hiding the fact that VW Group is and will continue to be a force to be reckoned with in the automotive electrification marketplace globally. I believe that if any company can surpass Tesla as the market leader for EVs this decade, 
I think it is the VW Group, which to me is okay. Look, I've said this many times as well and will continue to say at us as well also. We need all the OEMs to step up their EV plans fast and in a big, big way in order to really take a bite out of climate change and our planetary greenhouse gas emissions. We simply don't have the time to sit around and plan for the future, but we must act and act now. So again, congratulations to VW Group for achieving many milestones so far on their quest for electrification. And this decade for them will be exciting to watch. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed those few stories and my take about VW Group and where they're at. Thanks very much for watching on YouTube, for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Tell other people about the show. I'd love to always grow my subscriber ship. I guess that's the right word. And I do appreciate everybody commenting and for everybody watching. Thank you very much. Uh, if you are a Patreon supporter, my humble thanks as well for those who continue to support me on Patreon. It's very much appreciated, and I'm always, again, humbled by that. My PSA continues with everybody trying to please uh, try to stay safe during these times. As most major countries, excuse me, are rolling out the vaccines, it's imperative that we continue to be mindful of what's happening out there. This next coming week will be some more car announcements from uh, other car companies and all kinds of stuff coming up. So continue to watch the EV landscape, a lot of things happening, and I will try to bring you, continue to bring you relevant news that I think is, that you'll find interesting in order to help uh, educate minds one tailpipe at a time, which is what I like to do. So again, very thanks for you to take the time to watch this show and stay safe. And until the next show, I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye and take care.